Hello. So we're going to start. Uh, I am going to try to explain how to automate uh, data management. So I will go very fast about the Stratio. Stratio is a company that we founded 10 years ago because our vision was that to manage data with people was super difficult. And it was going to be impossible. So uh, we are happy that right now this is true. Why? Because data has growth exponentially. We have more data than ever. We are now managing not only structured data, but also images, natural language. Uh, so um, data has uh, multiplied 1,000 times in the last 10 years. And then uh, data management with people, in our opinion, is not possible any longer. So I will try to explain how to solve it and how to make it possible. So we work with some of the biggest companies worldwide, some of the biggest banks, telecom companies, retails. How are we helping all these customers? Well, first to explain the problems. How are we, how are you managing data right now? Mainly there are three solutions. We are managing data with data warehousing, on-prem, public cloud, whatever. We are managing data with big data lakes. And we are managing data with data lakes in the public clouds, with public clouds. So three solutions. Three solutions with the same problems. What are the problems? These are, in reality, these three solutions, they are physical data buckets. We have to move physically the data to any of these solutions. How? With people. We are doing workflows, CTLs, copying physical data to physical data buckets. It doesn't matter if it is on-prem or in the public cloud. You are copying the data to the public cloud. So public cloud was like the magical solution. OK, move the data to public cloud, and you will solve and get instantly value from your data. But in reality, it takes a long time, big effort, and it is not magic. So human effort, second. If you move the data as it was, and you do not govern the data, quality problems, no business meaning. So bad data, bad results. Garbage in, garbage out. If you are copying the data from on-prem to the public cloud, as it was, without governing the data, you will have the same results. Maybe a little bit better, but same results. And now, the use cases. You have to do reporting, AI models, to get value from the data. Once again, human effort. So public cloud, very good technologies. Combination is the recommendation, but does not solve the problems. So the big analyst analyzed this and said, what is the solution? The solution was data fabric. With the data fabric, the idea is, according to the definition of Forrester or Gardner, you are able to create a unified data layer, unified, but in an automated manner, automated. So automation is the key. To help people to manage data, the data fabric automate things. And this is the recommendation if you talk to Forrester, to Garner, they all will say, go to the data fabric concept. What is the key in this data fabric concept? Automation and trusted. You should be able to trust your data. So in order to trust your data, you need to govern the data, good quality and security. So the recommendation is not to move the data to a new physical bucket. It's for you to automate data management and for the data to be governed, to have quality and security. So automated data governance. And this is what we were doing. And we were super happy when we started with Stradio. So we solve it. We are a data fabric. So automatically, we discover the data, automation. With our, our virtualizer, 
we automate data access and data movement. Super. Uh, we give meaning with our semantic business terms to the technical data. And in this way, we simplify data governance, improve quality, and so on. And then you can do the use cases. So data fabric was the solution. But in reality here, we are helping a lot. For example, we are simplifying and accelerating data governance. But still, there were some of the actions, of the steps to automate. So with data fabric, with the semantic definition, we are accelerating data governance 10x. It doesn't matter what data governance product you are using. They are fantastic products. If you are not governing the data with a semantic layer, you will go 10 times slower than with a semantic data governance. Why? Because what we are doing in a data fabric is you define the security rules, the quality rules, or the business definition to the business term, semantic layer. You map the technical data with the semantic terms, and then you can execute the security rules, the quality rules, or the meaning, and the metadata to any technical data. How many business terms definition of telephone do you have in your company, the main telephone of your customer? One, only one. How many telephone data do you have in your company? 10 times, 100 times in one Oracle, a big data lake, the public cloud. Technical data, 10, 100 times. So with the semantic data governance, you define quality, security, and meaning to the business layer, and you propagate the data governance to all the technical data. We are simplifying and accelerating 10x minimum in all our customers. So this is the way to go for data governance, semantic data governance, business definition. With a semantic layer, it is impossible to do this. So the data fabric with the semantic layer is the edge, the key, to really help to manage data. But still, we were not automating everything. We were automating data access with the virtualization. We were simplifying data governance, but still for data governance and to do the reports and AI models, we needed a big, big human effort. So suddenly, we created generative AI. And there is not any single talk now that we don't talk about generative AI. So sorry about this, but I have to explain it. With generative AI, we have built not a data fabric, but a generative AI data fabric. We are automating everything with generative AI. So what is generative AI? I will go super fast here, because I want to do a demo and to show how this is working and reinventing, reporting, remoting, data transformation, everything. So generative AI, you can talk, you can uh, generate images, analyze images, and especially generate code. So the applications in the future, how your users are going to get value from data, is not with an application with menus. Your data applications in the future, meaning next year, will have a test box in which the user talk or writes what he wants, and Gen AI will answer. No menus, no graphical user interfaces, super complex, just talk. Conversational applications. And this is natural evolution of all the applications in the world right now. Why? Because we can talk, and the engines can not only talk, but they are starting to reason. Why? Well, this is Gartner. Gartner said that in 2026, 50% of all the code in the planet will be generated by Gen AI. We think that it will go faster. I will explain it why. And this is 
IT Natural Evolution. We started, I am a telecom engineer, I started doing computing uh, with machine code, zeros and ones, then ensembler, then structured programming, object programming, natural language, natural evolution of IT. We don't need to program any longer. We are doing this in all our customers, and we are getting the average 30% increment in productivity. 30, 3, 0. This is a lot. In one year, we are able to improve the productivity of any of your companies 30%. There is no any other technology that we have seen that is able to achieve this. And this is a natural evolution, no programming. Just explain what you want, and the code is made by generative AI. But this, in our opinion, is going to be faster. Why? Because now we have a new engine, better engine every six months. It goes four times faster than when we started with GenAI. Um, because the investments are not any longer in billions. They are in trillions. <laughs> this is two or three times more than the, all the money that UK is generating per year. So this goes exponential. So the summary for GenAI is this one. It is super, goes super fast, but especially in technology, magic doesn't exist. So it has some problems. What are the problems? Uh, just to put an example, less than 20% of the POCs uh, that we have made in 2023 are in production. Why? Because we overrate the capabilities of GenAI right now, and we underrate or underestimate the possibilities and capabilities of GenAI. I will try to explain this. Why GenAI is failing? Why GenAI does not work in your POCs? So I would like to make a question here. Who of you have been using, doing a POC, or just uh, doing something with generative AI? Can you? OK. How many of your POCs are in production right now? Very few hands. Why? Because we are generating a, a GenAI engine with public information. Millions of websites, millions of books, public information. But the information and the knowledge of your companies is private. So if you ask a GenAI engine something about your company, it will fail. It doesn't have a single clue, not at all, because it's only managing public knowledge. So it doesn't work. And these are the problems, because it doesn't know how your company is managing data or things. If you ask something, it will invent hallucination. Low accuracy, it will fail two out of every three questions and security. That is the reason your POCs are not in production. So let's move this box to production. How to do it? Security. How to make the generative AI engines safe? Well, Garner gives a super clear answer worldwide. Use a data fabric. This is the first part of my presentation. We are a data fabric. With the data fabric, you can manage your data automatically, govern your data. And with active metadata, you can say this data cannot go outside to a GenAI engine, just with a metadata. So with data fabric, you manage your data, and you can make a safe use of GenAI engines. And this is precisely what we are doing. First problem solved, security. And this is a super big problem. Just to give some examples, what is the most frequent question in the GenAI uh, first use cases? Give me the salary of the executives of the company. 
Why? Because the business users have access to the data and they are hacking the data. This is natural, human being behavior. So you need to use it safe, data fabric. Second problem, hallucinations. Hallucinations, it is inventing things and precisions. This is a public benchmark with uh, open data and 44 questions. These are the results or of the best engines right now in the market. As you can see here, only 31% precision. 31 means meaning two out of every three questions, it fails. Imagine you give this to the chairman of your company, and it is failing two out of every three questions. You will be fired next day. So no question about why the POCs are not in production. It doesn't work. So how are we solving this? Once again, Forrester Gardner, the answer is very clear. About around the data, give a semantic layer, give meaning to the data, and with the data fabric, Augment the engine to make it work. So about the concept in a Stratio, uh, we are not very imaginative. We are just following the analysis of the companies that has the solution. But we implemented the solution. So how are we solving all this? We augment with the semantic knowledge the main engines in the market. They could be. Public ones, the public clouds, Google Gemini, Azure OpenAI, uh, Amazon Bedrock with Cloud3. Or they could be internal, because you want an internal Gen AI and nothing to go outside your company. It doesn't matter. We can use any of these four. But we have to make it work. How? We discover the data. With the semantic layer, we give business definition. With this, we get the knowledge, augment, give this private knowledge to the engines, and then it works, and you can do any data use case. I will explain now this step by step. But this is the concept. Data fabric, how to discover data, define the knowledge, what the data in documents or structured data means, augment the engines, and now it works. Super simple. Simple to say it. <laughs> to solve it is not that simple. So how are we doing it? Data governance. Data governance is the natural way to get the knowledge. And with that private knowledge, augment the engines and make it work. How are we doing it? We discover the data, structure our documents. We access, automate access to that data with the virtualizer. With the semantic views, we give business meanings. These are business terms. And we are mapping with this business view, business terms, any of the technical data. So this that you see here could be an oracle table, OK? Technical data, no meaning. If you make a question to this Oracle table, the GenAI will fail, for sure. No clue what is C1. Then what we are doing with this application is we are mapping the technical data with business terms, for example, telephone. And then now we are translating technical data to knowledge. We define the business terms in the business glossary, and with this, now we have the knowledge of the company, private knowledge. Here, in the business glossary, the semantic business layer, and the relations. So Stratio Data Governance is like a fast, automated knowledge structure. This is what we are doing. Why? To make GenAI work with this. We pack it in a vectorial data store, and we augment the engines. And now GenAI does work. And these are real results in this public benchmark. This is in our public uh, website, and you can see the results. We are getting 
97% of precisions uh, uh, with the GNAI engines. So the same, the next question. Who of you are using GNAI with data and are getting more than 90% precision? No one. This is not normal. The problem in Stratio we have is that when companies or people that are already using GNAI, we said we get more than 90% precision, people does not believe us. <laughs> because in our experience, this is super difficult to achieve. The second product that is doing it really well gets 69. With 69, it is failing one out of every three questions. So still, you cannot put it in production. With 95%, human errors are 92. Human errors programming generates 8% errors. So 95 improves human uh, solutions. OK? So with 90. Five, you can put it in production. We are the product that generates better accuracy right now in the market. But this is not magic. It is data governance generating the private content, making augment the motor, the engine, and now it works. So with this, the conclusion. Data fabric, discover data, discover documents, semantic layer give business meaning, knowledge, Data governance, business definition, we augment the engines, and now you can do reporting, AI models or data transformation, talking, no more programming. Your applications for data will not have menus. It will have a test box. I am exaggerating a little bit, but it's just to <laughs> emphasize the point. OK? So, now you can talk to your data, data governance, and I will try to show this in the next demo. So what we have achieved with Data Fabric with Generative AI Engine is automate data management. We automate data access. We automate data governance. And we automate the last mile reporting, AI, and data transformation. So we really are automating and simplifying data management. So uh, Garner uh, recommended Stratio, like one of the only 10 companies that can use generative AI to manage data worldwide. And we are, are more than willing to show this in our booth in Stratio with a real demo and to answer any question after uh, the talk. So I would like to show this in a demo. In this demo, I could go and, and show a demo about how you can transform data just talking, not more ETL workflows programming, or knowledge experts, com conversational knowledge experts. But I will make the demo about reporting. AI models, how to automate AI models, is like more cool, no? It's a shiny object. 80% of value of the companies comes from reporting. Reporting and insights. With GNAI Data Fabric, we reinvent completely reporting. Reporting your companies, I insist, will be solved with a test box, talking, not programming or doing strange things. So let's go to the demo. I will try to. Improve quality. Yeah. So the first thing that I, I want to show in this demo is how generative AI doesn't work. OK? <laughs> so first thing, generative AI is generating code. So we are going to make a question. This is BlueMind. It's one of the conversational interfaces we have in our platform in our data fabric. So you can make any question. You can say, OK, give me, tell me the daily sales order by day. So the GNAI can uh, generate code. And it is saying, it's, oops, oopsie doopsie. <laughs> I don't have the knowledge to answer this. Why? Because a GNAI engine 
is not connected to your data. No clue about your data, cannot generate code. So no way to, to, to answer this. What we are doing, this is one of the biggest banks worldwide. So with the data fabric, we connect to the data, to discover the data, and we discover here, for example, an Oracle data store with these tables. And this is completely automated. Data Fabric have right now access to this Oracle, Big Data Lake, uh, S3 in Amazon, whatever data you have in your company. But the technical data, the technical tables, we are now in a table called Customer. And the column is called C1. C1 has no meaning. So the generative AI engine cannot answer anything about C1. So we are going to make the question with the technical data. Now we choose the data fabric with the technical data, and we make the question. Tell me the daily sales. And now it is going to say, I don't know. No, it is going to invent hallucination. And it, the answer to the daily sales is FOP. FOP, is not, they are not even numbers. It is a complete hallucination. Why? Because if you see the SQL code we are generating, the, the GenAI is generating, C2 has no meaning. No way for the GenAI to solve this. So now we are going to Data Fabric, helping, and we generate the semantic layer, knowledge on top of the data. And this is not something with metadata, no. These are real business views. As you can see here, this is our product. This is a table from Oracle. We are mapping with business terms each one of the technical data, giving meaning to the technical data. Now, and we have give, given meaning to most of the tables. All the tables involved in this question knowledge. And the business terms are defining the business glossary, knowledge. So you can make a question, tell me the daily sales, order by day, and how it works. It is 97% uh, accuracy in this case, and you can get this code, because now it is working, and move it to Power BI, or Tableau, or MicroStrategy, and then, sorry about this, <laughs> and then to do the reporting in the BI tool that you want to use, talking, not programming. You choose the graphic, and you are doing the reporting, talking. Why? Because it works. So is generative AI only about generating code? Not at all. You can make questions, because now here I am not a technical user. I am a business user. So I don't have any clue about what a table is and what is in the table. So I can make a question like, OK, uh, what information, what functional information I have in this table? And the NAI, because now it's governed, will answer to the business user. You have the balance. The balance means this. And I can make other questions like, OK, um, what other tables uh, can I check this with? And then uh, it will say these other tables. And then I can ask what KPIs I could generate with all this. And then the generative AI engine, the data fabric with the Gen AI, will recommend the user new KPIs that he was not able to get with human thinking. So we are not only automating programming, we are getting more value from your data. Not only this, with generative AI, we talk to your data, you can make questions, and it can solve uh, with data that was not in the technical data store. So it is able to calculate new questions. For example, this one is super complex, with this I finish. Uh, a programmer was not able to solve this because it, he was not a financial uh, expert. 
the Gen AI, AI uh, engine was able to calculate this first time and to solve it in less than 30 seconds. So it is able not to answer just with the data that it is in the data stores, but to create and calculate new data. So the conclusion is Gen AI with Data Fabric automates data access, data governance, uh, Gen AI making it work, and then we can automate any use case. Talk to your data, reporting, uh, data governance, automated data governance, and uh, data transformations or AI models. So this is the new way to manage data and to get value from data, just talking. So thank you very much.